Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yes, I'll be start. Are you there? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so guys, we are going to start a very uh, small chapter, not much important, okay, as far as the exam thing is concerned. Okay, only one thing is important in this chapter, that is hyd that is uh, this one, the hardness of water, okay, nothing much. So hydrogen and its compound. So we are going to see, uh, you know, the preparation methods of hydrogen and what all compounds it forms and what are the properties of these compounds. So it is a you know portions of inorganic chemistry and inorganic chemistry you have to you know mug it up you have to memorize it there's nothing much you know you have to understand there are multiple logics you can apply at the same point but which logic dominates when that you should know and according to that only you should find out the answer right so hydrogen is what hydrogen is the smallest and lightest element known lightest element known okay it has its atomic number is one atomic number is one okay number of electron number of proton is one number of neutron is zero okay since hydrogen has one electron in its outermost shell Okay, it can do all three types of exchange. Okay, it can share electron, right? It can donate electron and it can accept as well. All the three kinds of exchange possible with hydrogen. Okay, that's why hydrogen forms a number of compounds, large number of compounds. Correct. It never shows or forms octet, but it forms duplet. Maximum of two electron in the outermost shell it can have. Hence, we say it forms duplet. Okay. Because of three different behavior, sharing of electron, donation of electron, or acceptance of electron initially there was a confusion ambiguity that in which group we should place hydrogen should be placed with group one or should we go with a uh, group 14 that is carbon family which shows sharing of electron carbon family you see it has the tendency of sharing of electron right ch4 you see carbon shares its electron with the four hydrogen so group 14 elements shows sharing tendency. Okay, group 17 elements, that is halogen family, it has the tendency to acceptance. It wants to accept one electron. Because if you look at this fluorine, fluorine has um, nine electron. Okay, so one is two, two is two, two P five configuration we have for fluorine. So it has high tendency to accept one electron converts into F minus and octet is complete to S2, 2 p 6 configuration is there. That goes with group 17 elements, right? Okay, group 13 elements, like I said, carbon has six electron, C6. So one S2, two S2, two, two P2. So it neither loses four electron, difficult to lose, nor it accepts four electron, that is also not possible. So it shares this four electron in order to make the four bond tetravalency, right? So group 13 elements has sharing tendency, right? If you see the elements of group one, right, they have tendency to release electron. Na converts into Na plus, 
and one electron goes out. Since hydrogen has all these three types of, you know, of possibilities, that's why it was a confusion initially that where we should place hydrogen. Should we place this with group one or group 13 or group 17? So finally, we go like we went with its electronic configuration, which is 1s1. And since all the elements of group one, its valence shell configuration is ns1, and hydrogen also has 1s1. Hence, we finally placed hydrogen in first group. Okay, so hydrogen is placed in first group, but hydrogen is not an alkali metal. Not an alkali metal. It is placed with alkali metal because of its configuration, but it is not considered to be as an alkali metal. Because alkali metals are those elements or metals which reacts with water and forms hydroxide. Okay, that is the definition of alkali metal. Hydroxide like LiOH, right? NaOH, KOH, all these are alkali metals we have because it reacts with water and forms hydroxides. Okay, and that is not you know, true with hydrogen, hence, hydrogen is not considered as alkali metals. So, because of these properties, it has various you know, uh, uh, similarities with halogen family, with carbon family, and with group one elements. Finally, with respect to its electronic configuration, it is placed in group one, okay? Now, how do we prepare hydrogen? So write down the next here thing is preparation of hydrogen. Preparation of hydrogen. First one, by the action of water on active metals. action of water on active metals. See, active metals are generally metals of, uh, you know, group one and group two, okay? So you have to keep this in mind. Active metals are generally metals of group one, that is alkali metal and group two, right? Alkali metal and alkaline metal. So any elements of alkali metal, you see, for example, Na plus H2O converts into NaOH plus H2, 2H2O, 2Na, 2NaOH, okay? So metal hydrolysis, hydroxides, water releases. This reaction is highly rigorous and exothermic. Okay. Rigorous and exothermic means heat or energy releases in this reaction. Right? Write down in order to slow down the reaction in order to slow down the reaction we use we use amalgams for the reaction Amalgam for the reaction. What is amalgam? What is amalgam? Amalgam is the alloy of mercury, right? Mercury alloy. So the metal that we are using, instead of pure metal here, we are using amalgam that is Hg with sodium in the reaction, okay? 
since the reaction is rigorous and exothermic, so high amount of heat releases and there are chances of catching fire. That's why we need to slow down the reaction and for that purpose, we need to decrease the rate of the reaction. And in order to decrease the rate of the reaction, we are using amalgam instead of pure metal. Correct? Okay. This occupy, this actually amalgamated metal that you have, it has lesser surface area. So mercury occupies the surface of metal, decreases the surface area, and hence the reaction rate also decreases. Okay. This is the first method we can use for the preparation of hydrogen. Have you done this? Fine, if it is deleted in school, let it be, but we have to do it. Okay, it's not deleted in J. That's why I won't, you know, uh, go in that detail. Okay, I'll, you know, give you the important things only. Okay, Chitish. They haven't done preparation. Okay. Second method of preparation you see by using alkali solution. Right on metals like Metals like beryllium, zinc, tin, aluminium, metals like beryllium, zinc, tin, aluminium reacts with alkali solution reacts with alkali solution and evolves hydrogen gas. Reaction is this, Be plus 2 NaOH, it gives Na2BeO2 plus H2. This compound, we call it as sodium sodium berylate and hydrogen gas evolves okay if you take zinc here zn plus 2naoh and if you heat this it forms na2 zno2 plus h2 right hydrogen gas evolves hydrogen gas evolves this we call it as sodium zinc it and it was add an O2 sodium zinc it. Then second method of preparation, third one actually, 
by the action of by the action of acids on certain metals write down metals with are more electro positive one sec metals which are more electro positive then hydrogen displaces hydrogen from displaces hydrogen from dilute acids okay so example you see we can use metals here zinc we can use iron we can use magnesium etc so for example zn plus h2so4 dilute it gives znso4 plus h2 fe plus 2 hcl dilute gives fecl2 plus h2 this is the lab method we have okay this is the lab method we have we won't take dilute uh, sorry concentrated acid here we take dilute acid then next one by electrolysis of water electrolysis of water it is a commercial preparation method commercial preparation method okay so in this let me draw the diagram first
Okay, this is the diagram we have. Now in this, we are taking We are taking any OH solution here. Right, so this is what this is twenty percent any OH solution okay this uh, you know this is asbestos diaphragm this we use to this we use to you know prevent the mixing of h2 and o2 this one is an electrode is electrode this is also we have electrode this electrode is connected to the positive end of the battery and this is the anode we have okay anode and at anode always oxidation takes place oxidation always at anode this one is cathode and at cathode, always a reduction takes place, right? The, you know, the, the rod which is connected to the negative end of the battery of put any potential V is called the cathode, which is connected to the positive end is called anode. Anode oxidation, cathode reduction, okay? We have aqueous NaOH solution here. Right. So if you look at the ions present in the mixture, in the solution, we have ions we have here. We have Na plus ion. Right. OH minus ion, H plus ion. Because aqueous NaOH, so water and NaOH both present. So H2O plus NaOH is there. So we have all these three ions present. Okay. When the reaction takes place, from this end anode oxidation takes place oxygen evolves from this point this inlet and from here h2 comes out so that is how the preparation of h2 a hydrogen happens in the electrolysis of water okay Rea reaction you must write down at cathode did you draw the diagram we have reduction and reduction we know it is the consumption of electron so h2o plus 2 electron it converts into 2oh minus plus h2 right at anode oxidation takes place so 2oh minus converts into H2O plus half O2 plus two electron. This is the reaction at cathode and anode. So you can clearly see at anode oxidation oxygen involved, cathodes hydrogen involved. Instead of NaOH, we can also use H2SO4 for this purpose. Did you draw the diagram, the previous one? So we have this ion present, right? It is a positive and means positive charge is present here on this electrode, right? So the negative ion which is present here, that is OH minus, which is present here in this the solution, as the as you connect this with the battery, this ion moves towards the positive electrode, and here oxidation takes place. 
reaction I have written. Okay. And here the H2O molecule, it moves towards this side. Okay, negatively charged. And reduction happens here and H2 evolves. Copy it. Okay, next method of preparation we have by Bosch process. The catalyst we use in this process is Catalyst is nickel and temperature we use around 1270 Kelvin. Temperature you don't have to memorize. Catalyst you must take care of. Okay. In this what happens, superheat, superheated steam. Superheated steam is passed over. passed over red hot coke passed over red hot coke means carbon so the reaction is carbon solid plus h2o in the form of steam it gives co carbon monoxide plus h2 right this reaction is endothermic energy consumes in this reaction. Energy consumes in this reaction endothermic. This mixture CO with water, we call it as water gas. This mixture important. This is known as water gas. Water gas, we also call it as synthesis gas or simply syn gas all are same thing okay since co is also present over there so it is an impure gas hydrogen that we have right it's an impure gas in order to get the pure hydrogen we need to remove this carbon monoxide co right so write down next into this In order to get pure hydrogen, in order to get pure hydrogen, we need to remove carbon monoxide. We need to remove carbon monoxide. And for this, and for this, carbon monoxide is oxidized into carbon dioxide. And this carbon monoxide is oxidized into carbon dioxide in presence of in presence of FeCrO4. This we call it as iron chromate. In presence of iron chromate, FeCrO4, iron chromate, this works or behaves as a catalyst. Right? 
So the water gas we have CO plus H2 in presence of water FeCrO4 it converts into CO2 plus 2H2O. This escapes and we get pure form of hydrogen. Once again. Yeah, so catalyst for, you see, catalyst for this thing, um, for BOSS process is nickel. It's not FeCrO4, right? This is the catalyst we use to get the pure form of hydrogen. Okay. There are a few methods of preparation of, uh, you know, hydrogen we have, apart from this, few more, few more methods are there, like Lane's process and all. NCRT, you must go through, you will see all those things. There. Okay. One important point in this chapter we have, I'm just going through the important things. One important point in this chapter we have, that is hydrides. Okay. What are the different types of hydrides it forms? Okay. See, hydrogen combines with hydrogen combines with various different elements various different elements and forms and forms hydrides, okay? Three main types of hydride it forms. It classifies into various categories, okay? So hydrides, we have three main types. We'll do all these one by one. So hydrides, like I said, we have three main types here. The first one is ionic hydrides. Ionic hydrides, we also call it as salt-like hydrides or saline hydrides. Okay, ionic salt-like or saline hydrides, all three are same. Okay. The second type of hydrides we have, that is uh, metallic hydrides. metallic or we also call it as non stoichiometric or it is interstitial hydrides interstitial hydrides okay and the third types of hydrides we have molecular hydrides we also call it as covalent molecular or covalent hydrides 
Okay. Now, ionic hydrides are mainly formed by by the elements of group one and group two. I'll write down in this only. We can do it in short. These are forms by the elements of of group one and two. We have few exceptions into this, like BH2 is an exception. Okay. LIH is an exception. Okay. MGH2 to some extent, it is also an ex ex uh, exception. Okay. Sorry, not LIH, BH2 and MGH2 are the exceptions. So I don't accept BEH2 and MGH2. All hydrides of group one and group two are ionic hydrides. Okay. If you talk about metallic and non stoichiometric hydrides, these hydrides are formed by D block elements. By elements of D block. And this is formed by the elements of P block plus BEH2 is also covalent. MGH2 is partially ionic, partially covalent. Okay, so this general idea you must have. First two block forms ionic hydrides, then metallic hydrides, and then covalent hydrides, correct? Okay. This is further classified into three categories. We'll discuss that later. Okay, I don't have space here. Few points in all these hydrides you see. First heading you write down, ionic hydrides. Okay, one second. Then Okay. Ionic hydrides, like I said, group one and group two elements forms. So elements of group one forms MH type hydrides. Okay. Forms MH type hydrides, for example. We can have LIH, okay, NAH, etc. The oxidation state of hydrogen here is minus one. Have already done this in redox reaction. If you talk about elements of group two, it forms MH2 types hydrides, right? Example, we have CAH2, right? CAH2. We have uh, mm, SRH2, BEH2, MGH2. It forms this type of hydrides, but these two hydrides are 
covalent in nature. It's not ionic, it's covalent. And that is because of Fezzan's rule, polarization, small size. Okay. Covalent character of BEH2 is more than to that of MgH2. Okay. These are ionic hydrides we have. These are ionic hydrides. Okay. Now, for these hydrides, you see, few properties we have. Thermal stability, write down, thermal stability, first point, Thermal stability of these hydrides decreases down the group. Okay, so if you see LIH is more stable than NAH, then KH etc. Okay, because size increases down the group. Similarly, we have CaH2 more stable than SRH2 than BaH2. Size increases, hence lattice energy decreases, stability decreases. Done. Second property write down. The density of density of these hydrides these hydrides are are higher than higher than those of metals from which they are formed. From which they are formed. One very important point here is except LIH, except LIH, all hydrides can decompose, can decompose into their parent element on strong heating. Right. So if you heat CaH2, if you heat this around uh, 675 to 775 Kelvin, Temperature you don't have to memorize. It converts into carbon solid and hydrogen gas. LIH won't decompose since it has very high heat of formation. High heat of formation, hence difficult to dissociate.
because of the smallest size in the group. That's why lithium shows abnormal properties. Yeah, once again, Priyam. Okay. Second type of hydride, you see. Metal, metallic hydrides. non isometric and interstitial hydrides also we called. mainly formed by elements of elements of d block and it's not like all elements forms this kind of hydrides okay Correct. It forms by the adsorption of hydrogen. Adsorption of hydrogen on the surface of the metal. Okay. Properties are what? These are non stoichiometric hydrides. Non stoichiometric hydrides. For example, you see, we have VH vanadium hydride 0 0.56. We has Yttrium, YH2, YH3, okay, LAH lanthanum, 2.87. These kind of hydrides forms. In this, the density, in this, the density, one second. Okay, so non stoichiometric hydrates examples is this density of density pair. They have asked questions in the exam. Okay, density of these hydrides properties only that you have to memorize. These hydrides is lesser than from their parent metal, is lesser than. then 
their parent metal okay one very important properties here we have which they have asked in the exam many times you see in d block elements uh if you consider from group 6 group 7 group 8 group 9 okay group 6 7 group 8 group 9 only one element we have which forms this kind of rights among these groups only chromium only chromium forms metallic hydrides all other elements of these groups 6 7 8 9 does not form this hydrides right does not form this hydrides and hence from group 6 to group 9 this range we call it as hydride gap okay hydride gap must remember this thing hydride gap then okay third types of hydride you write down molecular or covalent hydrides molecular or covalent hydrides mainly formed by formed by p block elements like beryllium magnesium and magnesium belongs to s block but also forms this hydrides but forms this hydrides not also forms this hydrides it does not form ionic hydrides okay so the general formula that we have here general formula for this kind of hydrides uh for s block for s block the formula is mh n type and for p block the formula is mh Eight minus n type, where n is the n is the number of electrons in valence shell. Right? You see, for group two, this belongs to group two, right? So its valence electron is two, right? So it is BeH two, MgH two. this belongs to n right the valency electron p block you can say how many electrons are there accordingly we can write okay like for you see for this example for p block we can write nh3 we can write h2o we can write uh, no bh3 etc okay these are the hydrides of this now these hydrides that is molecular hydrides further classified into three categories
Okay, it's further classified into three categories. Did you write the previous slide? Should I go back? Yeah. Done? Okay. So, this is further classified into three categories, okay? So, the first type we have in this, that is electron deficient Electron deficient means molecule has less than eight electrons. Second type we have electron precise, exactly eight electrons. Electron rich, okay, more than eight. Electron rich is not more than eight. It's like there are lone pairs present. Donor electrons are there, means capability of donate electrons. That is electron rich. Okay, capability of donate electrons, electron rich. Electron deficient, uh, you know, hydrides are formed by the elements of group 13. Group 13 elements. For example, BH3 is an electron deficient hydrides. Okay, these are what? These are electron acceptors. Since electron deficient, so electron acceptors, okay, uh, act as Lewis acid. Lewis acids are those which has the capability to accept electron, right? Act as Lewis acid. One second.
Okay. So left to right, you have to go right from the P block. Group 13, electron acceptors, electron deficient hydrides act as a Lewis acid. Lewis acids are those molecules which has the tendency to accept an electron pair. Okay, understood? Diborane is also an example. It's a dimer of it, B2H6. This is called diborane. It is a dimer of BH3. Two BH3 molecules combines and forms B2H6 diborane. Electron precise hydrides are formed by the elements of the next group, that is group 13, sorry, group 14, carbon family. Okay. For example, we have CH4, SIH4. All these are electron precise hydrides. Okay. Right. Nothing much we have important in this. Electron rich hydrides further classified into three categories again. Right. It is formed by obviously group, not three categories, let it be. We won't say like this, not required. Rather, we say it forms by three groups. 13, 14 we have here. Then this electron rich hydrides we have from group 15, group 16, group 17. All the rest of the groups of P block forms electron rich hydrides. Electron rich hydrides means what? They have, you know, capacity to donate electron pair. Capacity to donate EP, electron pair. Okay. For example, if you see group 15, group 15 is nitrogen family. Right. Nitrogen family is NH3. And we know on NH3, we have one lone pair. So one lone pair, it can donate electron rich hydrate. Okay, H2O, next group 16, you see? Yes, correct, we can say. They behaves as Lewis space. They, their you know, characteristics, it's similar to Lewis space, right? Okay, so this can donate and this can accept. Group 13 can accept and this can donate and it is in between, neither donate nor accepts electron precise. Another one you see, H2O, group 16, hydrides, two lone pair, and the rest one is HF, three lone pair, right? Group 15, 16, and 17, three lone pair, behaves as Lewis space. These are electron donors. None. Yes, done. Okay. There are a few compounds of, uh, you know, hydrogen, that is hydrogen peroxide and water molecule we need to discuss. In water molecule, we'll see the, you know, the reason of hardness of water, what is hard water, what is soft water, what is the reason of hardness of water, what is the removal way, like how do we remove hard water, hardness of the water. Okay, what are the different ways for that? What are different compounds we use for removal of hardness of water? Okay, so, and, and only this part is important. The hardness of water, it's like something like, suppose five minutes you have to enter into the room, examination hall, you have only five minutes and you want to revise quickly some things. So in this chapter, this is the one thing that you can go through. That is the hardness of water, reason of hardness, removal property. 
okay most of the times they ask question from this part only that is the hardness of water and that is the only part which is important in this okay next like i said the compounds of hydrogen the first one is we are going to see hydrogen peroxide so we'll finish this today and water plus hardness we'll do next class we'll finish it off okay so hydrogen peroxide preparation method you write down okay first one first one from barium peroxide from barium peroxide write down hydrated barium peroxide hydrated barium peroxide barium peroxide that is bao2 dot 8h2 on reaction with with dilute h2so4 on reaction with dilute h2so4 forms forms h2o2 hydrogen peroxide reaction is bao2.8 h2o plus h2so4 on heating it converts sulfate converts into sulfate plus we have h2o2 plus we'll have 8 h2o for note you write down here anhydrous barium peroxide anhydrous barium peroxide forms forms a protective layer of barium sulfate anhydrous barium peroxide forms a protective layer of barium sulfate on its surface hence the reaction is not possible hence the reaction is not possible that is why we are using hydrated barium peroxide right one well, last thing we can also use instead of h2so4 we can also use h3po4 orthophosphoric acid and carbonic acid that is h2co3 h2co3 is carbonic acid h3po4 is orthophosphoric acid as an acid we can use these two also for the same purpose okay second method of preparation electrolytic process electrolytic process in this process 
in this process electrolysis of 50% electrolysis of 50% H2SO4 sulfuric acid 50% H2SO4 50% H2SO4 is carried out electrolysis of 50% H2SO4 is carried out at low temperature using platinum electrode at low temperature using platinum electrode so this H2SO4 two molecules of it it, dis it dissociates as 2H++ 2HSO4- minus and this 2HSO4 minus at anode it get oxidized into H2S2O8 peroxy disulfuric acid two electrons goes out anode the reaction is this now this H2S2O8 that is peroxy disulfuric acid goes under hydrolysis and it converts into acid and H2O2 peroxide. The name of this compound is peroxy disulfuric acid. H2S2O8 plus 2H2O is 2H2SO4 plus H2O2. Okay, peroxy disulfuric acid. These two are the preparation methods of H2O2. One last thing is the structure of this. H2O2 has open book structure. open book structure. The structure is this. Hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen and hydrogen. This you consider as the spine of the book. OO bond. You consider it as the spine of the book. And these two bonds are at 97 degree. Okay, non-linear structure it is. It is 97 degree. And this one is also 97 degree. This bond length is L2. This is also L2 and this is L1. Oxygen oxygen bond length is L1. Okay. Oxygen oxygen bond length L1 is more than to that of L2. On this, they have asked question in the exam. Okay. Why it is more? We have lone pair. So lone pair, lone pair repulsion increases the bond length. Right. So this structure, we call it as open book structure. It is non-linear and non-planar. Non-linear and non-planar structure we have. Okay, understood. Right, so these two properties, the bond length, name of the structure non-planar non-linear you must remember fine okay guys. so next class we'll see water and hardness of water reason and removal and that is it for this chapter okay i will share one pdf on surface this states of matter you solve that
okay did you finish the assignment have you submitted uploaded okay fine i'll i'll okay so i'll close it from my side fine okay thank you so much guys take care bye uh, uh, yeah whatever fine you keep on doing it but whatever you have done by the you know uh, by the scheduled date you should upload it okay and keep on doing it yeah thank you bye